On the SAT, trigonometry is limited to a small list of topics and formulas. By far the most important are the formulas represented by the mnemonic device SOKOTOA. Occasionally, you may need to use the formulas for complementary angles, such as sine of x is equal to cosine of 90 minus x, which I'll also cover in this lesson. Very few questions ask about the unit circle or radians. I will cover those topics in separate lessons. For now, just remember that the radian conversion is given in the reference chart and easily handled by Desmos. And most questions about the unit circle are actually about special right triangles, like the 30-60-90 triangle, which is also given in the reference chart. Let's start with some important definitions. Remember that trigonometry is based around right triangles. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is the side opposite the right angle, and it's always the longest side of the triangle. The other two sides are called the legs of the right triangle, but trigonometry often requires us to be more specific. If we are focusing on angle B, the opposite side is AC because it's across from the angle. The adjacent side is BC because it's next to angle B. The hypotenuse is also next to angle B, but the hypotenuse will always be the hypotenuse. The opposite and adjacent sides depend on location. If we switch our focus to angle A, the sides change. Again, the hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse because it's still across from the right angle. But now the opposite side is BC because it's across from angle A. The adjacent side is now AC because it's next to angle A. You might be wondering what would happen if we focused on angle C, the right angle. But you don't have to worry about that. For SAT trigonometry, we will always focus on the two acute angles of a right triangle. Let's give these sides actual lengths so that we can see how SOKOTOA works. The SO tells us that the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. To understand this formula, we need to look at three things. First, make sure you're focused on the correct angle. In this case, we are told to look at angle A. The opposite side would be three, and the hypotenuse is five. So the sine of A is equal to 3 fifths. The cog gives us the formula for cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now we look at the adjacent side, which is 4, and the hypotenuse, which is still 5. So the cosine of angle A is 4 fifths. TOA stands for tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Still focusing on angle A, the opposite side is 3, and the adjacent side is 4. So the tangent of A is equal to 3 fourths. Now, if we switched our focus to angle B, then the tangent will be different. This time, the opposite side is 4 and the adjacent side is 3, so the tangent of B is 4 thirds, not 3 fourths. Let's look at how we might use SOKOTOA to solve an SAT-style question. On the SAT, I recommend writing SOKOTOA on your scratch paper so that you don't make a careless mistake. Unlike other geometry formulas, SOKOTOA is not given in the SAT reference chart. Since this question is giving us the cosine, we will focus on the ka part of SOKOTOA. If we think about the cosine formula, we might feel like we have a problem. The question tells us that the cosine of f is 3 fifths, which suggests that the hypotenuse is 5. But we can clearly see from the picture that the hypotenuse is actually 25. How is that possible? The key idea to remember is that all of trigonometry is based on proportions. Sine, cosine, and tangent don't directly tell us the lengths of any sides of a triangle. Instead, they give us the relationship or ratio between two sides based on the angle. Even as the triangle gets bigger or smaller, the relationship will stay the same, which is why a lot of trigonometry questions also involve similar triangles. We can merge our two cosine equations to solve for the missing side because 3 fifths is actually a reduced form of the fraction we would make with the sides. Once we've set up the ratio, we can cross multiply and divide. 3 times 25 is 75, which is equal to 5 times df. Divide by 5 to get the df is 15. The SAT can make this question slightly harder by asking for the other missing side. If they had instead asked for the length of de, we would still use the cosine formula to find df. Then we can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing side. Remember that we can use Pythagorean theorem whenever we have two sides of a right triangle. Let's return to the simpler triangle to examine the other trigonometry formulas that you need to memorize. The sine of x is equal to the cosine of 90 minus x, and similarly, the cosine of x is equal to the sine of 90 minus x. These formulas relate the complementary angles in a right triangle. We could figure out the actual measurement of angle A using the inverse trig functions on our calculator, but the SAT doesn't really make us use those buttons. In fact, if on the SAT you find yourself doing more complicated trigonometry than what I've covered in this video, you're probably solving the question the hard way. Instead of finding the angles, let's just label angle A as x degrees. 
That means that angle B has to be 90 minus x degrees because the two acute angles in a right triangle must always add to 90 degrees. Remember that every triangle has 180 degrees, but a right triangle will use up 90 of those degrees with the right angle, leaving another 90 to be split between the two acute angles. Applying the formula, we can find that the sine of x is 3 fifths because the three leg is opposite angle A and the hypotenuse is five. The formula says this should be equal to the cosine of 90 minus x, which it is because the adjacent side of angle B is also the three leg and the hypotenuse is still five. In other words, these formulas work because the opposite side for one acute angle is the adjacent side for the other acute angle. You can derive this formula on the SAT by simply drawing a picture on your scratch paper, but it's often faster to solve by memorizing the formula. Even still, the complementary angle formulas are a low priority. Remember that almost every trigonometry question on the SAT will involve so Katoa in some way. Memorize the formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. I recommend writing so Katoa on your scratch paper so you don't get them confused. In school, trigonometry is a complex topic with lots of formulas and rules to memorize, but on the SAT it's pretty simple. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the lessons on the unit circle and radians, but this lesson should be enough for most SAT trigonometry questions. Thanks for watching.